Next up, we have Jesse Vincent giving a talk called Automating Fabrication Outputs with KiCad and Git. Jesse is the co-founder and CTO of Keyboardio and has been designing keyboards with KiCad for the past four years. In previous lives, he was mostly a software person. Please welcome them to the stage. Hello. Uh, let's see. Can hear, folks hear me all right? So, um, hi, I'm Jesse. I make keyboards, uh, as you just learned. Um, first up, this talk is all Chris Gamble's fault. I had this perfectly nice little Perl script that let me generate uh, schematics. And Chris was like, oh, you should give a talk about that at KeyCon. And somehow that resulted in me creating this horrible, horrible monstrosity I'm about to present to you. Um, in the process, I managed to cause a lot of people on Twitter to get really, really angry with me. Um, so the pro tip here is that you should never, ever mention Perl and Python and Docker in one tweet. I had people who were angry about Perl, people who were angry about Python, people who were angry about Docker, and a bunch of people were like, you're paid by the hour, aren't you? Um, so some important things to know about this talk is that I am building on a lot of really cool stuff that a lot of other people have done. Almost everything I did was sysadmin work. It was more shell scripting and make files than anything else. Everything I'm showing off is free. It's all open source. Um, and it ought to work pretty much anywhere, but I've only tested it on Linux because I ran out of time. Um, it is also important to know that this talk is not about best practices. It is about a thing that you might be able to use to get shit done and spend a little bit less time messing around with tools. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is fabrication outputs. Um, astonishingly, I have people asking me why one would want to bother automating fabrication outputs, because you don't do it that often, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, has anybody here ever gotten back a, a board order they placed where all the plated through holes they had thought they put on their board were missing? Uh, no, I haven't either. Um, yeah, automation is really, really good. Um, automation is really, really useful. Um, so we're going to start from schematics and we'll, we'll work our way to layouts. Back in the bad old days, the way that you'd plot your schematics, well, you'd do it by hand. You'd launch a schema. You'd get your nice window. You'd either use your mouse or you'd hit Alt-F and you'd get your, um, your file menu. Then you'd hit L, but it only works if you, it's a lowercase L. Um, so you've got plot highlighted and then you can hit Enter and then you get your dialog. And now you can do your plots. You type something in and you hit Tab and you can select what kind of thing you're plotting. And you hit Tab again and again. And about a dozen tabs later, if I remember to count right, then you can actually get some stuff outputted. Yay, I'm done, I've plotted my schematics, why would anyone automate that? Well, if you're paying any attention, you'll note that there's a problem here. Can anybody spot it? So, I said I was plotting PDFs but I act in, in my PDF output directory, but I accidentally plotted SVGs. And this was a legit mistake I made when I was prepping for the talk and doing slides. Um, and humans, humans make mistakes. Machines, pretty much never make mistakes. Um, so let's automate some sch um, schematic plotting. Uh, earlier today, w there was another talk that shows off another way to do automated schematic plotting using a tool called EE Show, which was written in the KiCad 4 era and was written for the OpenMoCo. And it's, it's kind of bit rotted and it doesn't support KiCad 5 and it's a third party engine that tries to understand schematic files and generate similar output. And early on I made the decision that I only wanted to let KiCad tell me what KiCad files look like because anything else is a, is a lie. It's a possibly very friendly lie, but it's a lie. So to automate schematic outputs, I'm using a, a, an important tool called Docker. If you have ever used Docker, you will know that it is a, essentially a virtual machine engine. And the first question I'm going to get is, what was I smoking? Um, 
yeah, I live in California, whatever. Um, but the important thing here is that it gets us a couple of things. It gets us portability, so it should be able to, all this tooling should be able to run on multiple platforms, and it gets us a known keycad version, an exact known keycad version. And that's really important because EE Schema's API breaks every single release. I'm not talking about the nice Python API, which even though it's not officially stable yet, it is stable enough to use pretty reliably. I'm talking about this, the API we've got for EE Schema. It is not a great API, but it's the API that we've got. Um, it's really not good, but it is the best um, because it's there. Um, in fact, this is an API that I've already demoed. This is that API. Well, it, this was in 4.0, and this was 5, and this is 5.1. And that API has improved every time, but it's changed every time. So anything you're going to be doing to automate that is, gonna is going to break with every release. So we shove it into Docker. Docker is a virtual machine engine. Use a tool called XVFB, which is essentially a virtual screen. So it pretends to have a monitor attached so you can run it headless. And then there's this cute little ancient Unix utility that I thought I would never have to use again after like 1994 uh, called XDo tool. Uh, it is essentially a virtual human that can move the mouse and press keys. And so we can use these things to trick KiCad or anything else into giving us a functional API. And so we jump through all these hoops just to plot schematics. Uh, I want to repeat again that this is a horrible and disgusting hack, and it's encapsulated so you never have to see it. And that means that as there are better options, it can be replaced without you having to change tooling. To plot bomb, or to output bombs, we have to do the exact same thing. To plot layouts, well, for boards, I use keyplot because I'm not absolutely stupid and insane. Um, if you've never touched keyplot, it's a really nice, well-documented Python tool, and it uses the built-in API, and has a really nice config file format, and is maintained, and it will plot, and it will plot boards for you all day and all night without complaining. Um, of course, we also will generate an interactive bomb using interactive HTML bomb, another nice tool. But this is all set up so that I put this stuff all together in one place so that you don't need to mess around with this. Everybody I've talked to has done part of this or all of this two or three times for one project or another, and then something changes and it bit rots and you never quite get around to putting it back together again. Um, and so it's my hope that by bundling this all in one place, it'll just work, well, hopefully everywhere, but tell me if it doesn't, um, and, that, and that you won't really have to maintain it very much. Um, if you want to play with it, that is a thing that you can do today. Um, it is just a couple of lines. You are grabbing our repos my repository from GitHub. You're pulling in all the other tools that I'm using. Um, you're sticking this stuff in your path, and then that make is going to run for like 10 or 15 minutes while it builds the Docker image with Ubuntu and KiCad 5.1 and a bunch of other tools, but then it's there and done. Once you've got it installed, if you want to try this in one of your projects, um, it's a not terribly complicated install process. You go into your project, and if you don't already have your own make file, you copy ours on top. It will figure out where it's installed and what your project is named, and then you can do things like type, type make fabrication outputs. That's all you need to do, I think. When it doesn't work, tell me. Um, so what you get, you, of course, you can get make bomb, which will give you a, a grouped CSV bomb. All of this stuff is hackable but should be more configurable, and I'm thrilled to take bug reports about which parts should be more configurable. But make bomb will generate something like that for you. Make interactive bomb, if you've never played with Interactive HTML bomb, it's really pretty. It'll show you your boards. It'll show you everything that needs to be placed on your boards. It'll walk you through hand placement. Um, it's a great tool. Make schematic SVG will generate a bunch of SVGs of your schematics, um, things like that. Make schematic PDF will generate PDFs of your schematics. Make Gerbers generates Gerbers and drill files. Um, 
As of now, it also generates PDFs and PostScript files and SVGs and DXFs, and yes, I've actually needed all of those with my manufacturer at various times. But again, should be more configurable. But all you gotta do is type once, and it, on my laptop running, it takes about a minute and a half to ch chug through all this stuff, including zipping it up. Um, so that's, that's fabrication outputs, but I've got some more toys. Um, a bunch of people have talked about Git this week, or this weekend. Um, is, who here uses version, a version control, some kind of version control system? Okay. I've discovered that when I ask the other way, no one is ever willing to raise their hand, and that is okay. Um, version control is really good. If it is not a thing that you are familiar with, it is worth spending time. Um, because you can figure out some very important stuff. You can figure out what changed, you can figure out when it changed, and who changed it. And most importantly, if you write good commit messages, you can figure out why it changed. And that's the, the one thing I'm going to harp on about how to use a version control system is that when you do that check-in and you're writing a message about what you just did, everybody can see that you moved a component or that you changed a trace width. But somebody, and that somebody may be you a year from now, may not understand the reason behind it. And so if, you, if your commit message just talks about the why, it is gonna make your life better. Um, everything else can, all of the what can be re reverse engineered pretty easily, but the state that's in your head can't. Um, most everybody these days uses Git for version control, and Git is primarily designed for code. It was originally designed for the Linux kernel. It is okay for KiCad projects. It's not great for KiCad projects. And the thing that most people will point to is Git diff. Git diff is an incredibly cool tool when you're working with code, which is text. And it's kind of a shitty tool when you're working with layouts and schematics and just about anything else. It doesn't help that KiCad's file formats weren't originally designed for version control. Um, this came up in the panel discussion last night and I learned some cool new stuff. Um, but the big issue is that automatic changes to your file cause, or to, to your files causes churn. So making a tiny change in a file and hitting save may cause cascaded changes amounting to tens of thousands of lines of code. Uh, or lots, tens of thousands of lines. There are ways to minimize those. Um, so some of the things you'll see are schematic and uh, power and flag auto renumbering, component ordering seeming to jump out from underneath you in, a, um, in your layout files. Uh, you'll see configuration and state get mixed together occasionally. Um, and there are parts of Git's tooling that give you rope to make this better. Um, if you've heard of a tool called Plot KiCad Schematic, another third-party tool that will attempt to emulate what EE Schema does to plot schematics. Uh, the author has a fairly nice write-up of some stuff he does to make his uh, schematics less churny, and it's this. Um, it uses a Git feature that when you check out a file, it tweaks it, and when you check a file in, it tweaks it. So that, in this case, he is making power, uh, power and flag numbers just vanish, pulling the updated date out of the, uh, your project file. It's not, um, it's not rocket science and it's something where I'm comfortable, would be comfortable using regular expressions to do this. Um, as I learned last night, there's a bunch more stuff that can be done to make your files churn less using the, a feature like this, but you need to know a lot about how layout and schematic files work. And that also means you need to parse them and if you were using said expressions to parse complicated, complicated files like the S expressions uh, that are our PCB files, it's really easy to screw up. And so it's a thing that can be done. It makes your Git history look nicer. It simplify your, simplifies your diffs, and I am pretty lukewarm on it. You, you do lose information. The diffs aren't great. Um, like, they make it better, they don't make it good. So, a bunch of stuff, I've, I've spent a bunch of time working on making layout diffs hurt less. So if you've, ever if you've ever diffed one of your boards doing something like this, I am comparing my board to what was three, rev three revisions earlier. Um, I got this. As it happens, I upgraded to 5.1. Um, I removed some tracks and things 
start getting complicated. There's some stuff that could get removed and then some stuff got reordered and my eyes started to glaze over and then I checked and saw that it was 60,000 lines of diff. Um, yeah, so, but this all goes to say that if we're editing graphically, we should be diffing graphically um, and that is a thing that can be done. So with a tiny little bit of setup, that same command, instead of those 60,000 lines of diff, can plot this. And so what we've got here, it, it, I will admit that it, I only handle two layer boards, but adding more layers is a for loop. I just haven't dealt. Um, so you've got a, the, your top, which is a mix of footprints and uh, silk screen and mask, just because it mostly all changes the same way at the same time, and having 12 different panels to compare gets annoying. The middle are your two copper layers, and the, and the bottom is the bottom equivalent of the top. So you, I can see pretty quickly here that what I was doing is I was moving those three key switches at the bottom of my keyboard, and then doing a bunch of really painful relayout because I didn't have some space. Um, so this is a, a fun thing, and the very first version of this was this horrible hack that took me like four hours of installing software to make it go, and then a bunch of custom tooling. So I wanna help you guys get it installed a little bit easier. So if you've installed the stuff from, from uh, step one, the install's really easy, it's already there. Um, you do need to do some, some setup to tell Git that when it sees a uh, KiCad layout, it should use our special diff tool. And so all this does is it says, hey Git, if you see a, any file whose name ends in .keycad PCB, then you wanna use the KiCad PCB diff tool, which is that thing we just installed. On the back end, it uses the Docker VM and a Python script to render the images and image magic and a whole bunch of caching because this is not a fast operation um, and then draws you a composite of those two images. So that's layout diffs. Schematics. Now, text is, diffs of schematics are better. The file format is a little bit more diffable. It's, I, you can kind of read it. Um, so, for example, diffing, here's diffing three revisions ago of my MCU schematic page, and some stuff changed, it's, but I get what's going on, and some other stuff changed, and I get what's going on, and I can understand it, but it gets tedious, because there are 40 screens of diff. Um, so again, visual tools are nice. Um, so for annoying reasons that I'm only willing to talk about with alcohol, um, git diff cannot be bludgeoned into doing, schema uh, into doing schematics in exactly the same way, so we have to use a custom git schematic diff tool. And when we do that, we can see that all those 40 screens of diff were some updates that were really just three three footprints that changed slightly when I upgraded to 5.1. Um, and that's useful to know. Um, so I do want to repeat, it's a horrible hack, it works around EE schema, it works around Git, but it does work. And for installation, again, it's already installed, and setup, it's already set up because Git doesn't actually let us do anything uh, to run it directly. So. I've got about 10 minutes left, but that's all the, the cool toys I have to show off. Um, in the future, I would love this package to automatically install KeyCost, which is this really cool tool that will automatically price your bomb, but when Octopart dropped their free, P, free API, it stopped working. They're, it looks like they're rewriting it, but it doesn't exist. We should be doing step up exports. I would really like design rules and electrical rules to be able to be checked from the command line. Um, it should be pretty straightforward to have this turn these outputs into orderable board packages so that you can literally type make Oshpark upload and have it basically put, a, put an order in on Oshpark so with no human inter inter interaction. Um, it should be more configurable than it is now, but it, do, it should work. Um, it needs to get tested on Windows and Mac, um, though you can run Docker on both of those so it should behave. Um, I had this list of things that I really wanted KeyCAD to do to make all this easier, and EE Scheme is getting its new API in six, so I'm happy with that. The second thing is, a lot of the time that this takes to run 
when uncached, it can take like 20 seconds to generate one of these diffs as it's going off and doing a bunch of exports and doing a bunch of compares. A bunch of that is generating PDFs and then converting the PDFs into raster images, which is dumb. I don't actually know if the output libraries that KiCad uses can generate raster, raster images trivially, but it'd be nice. Um, but I realized I don't have a whole lot on my wish list these days. Um, there's some resource, these slides are, will be online. I've got some resources, by that I mean prior art, and by that I mostly mean projects that I have looted wholesale to make all this go. Um, so for the schematic generation stuff, I started with my horrible tools and discovered that these nice folks at Productize in Belgium had done a much nicer version that at the time didn't actually work. That it turns out they had actually pulled it from the folk, from uh, Scott's split flap project where he had done this all for a single project. Um, there are two tools out there that I know of that will do direct schematic, uh, schematic plotting from, key, uh, from dot schematic files. Neither of them appears to work well in the modern world, um, but they exist and you may have more luck than me. Um, layout diffs, there is some prior art there. And the tricks for generating those composite images to show you diffs of, uh, diffs of boards and schematics is something that Wendell at Evil Mad Scientist did in 2011 and has been trying to get other people to do since then. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I've got. If you want to try this thing out, you can pull it down from GitHub. Um, are there questions? Um, why go to such an extent as like uh, making some application that clicks in a, in the plot window over a virtual machine instead of writing a few lines of C++ just to invoke the plotter? Because um, I'm a shitty C++ dev. Uh, um, and, bec um, and the other thing is I'd had my tiny little Perl script that did this and then discovered that somebody had built a fairly nice implementation of this and then I discovered it didn't work. Uh, and was already fairly committed at that point um, and on deadline for the conference. The big, um, I would be absolutely thrilled to, uh, to see tools that link against the e schemas libraries, though I've been told that that is possibly a more, uh, more involved than, than one might imagine. Um, but no, I'd be thrilled to throw all this out tomorrow. I mean, doing it the right way, yeah, it's certainly more involved, but uh, um, making it, a quick hack. If, in C++ if, that plots the symbols or the PCB to a if, file is um, not a big if, deal. If, um, if you are volunteering or could be guilt tripped into it, I'd be happy to chatter later. Um, okay, guys, I volunteer to do that right after uh, right, right after I've written the drag footprint with traces connected feature. Okay. I understand. I I gotta ask. You know. <laughs> uh, other questions. Uh, so, uh, that's a real nice horse. Uh, now I want to look inside its mouth and see its teeth. Um, how would you extend this to work with, like, like an online tool? Like, say, like with GitHub or GitLab or something like that? Um, so, my understanding is that, that with GitLab, there are, in fact, a bunch of cool configuration hooks where you could basically use all of these makefile targets to do auto-generation. Um, for GitHub, I would probably set up a Travis VM that's SCPing stuff somewhere. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah. If <clears throat> if there was uh, one thing you would change about the file format of either the schematic or the PCB, what would it be? It would be, it would it would be PCB not schematic, and it and I don't actually know at a deep level what's going on, but I believe that we could get stable ordering for components by timestamp, which I believe is the most stable thing about a component, and that would cause a lot less churn. It's not super important, like it's not super important once you're going to something that's not 
dipping text, but it'd be nice. Anything and else? Yeah. Any other questions? All right, thank you very Great. much. Thanks, everybody.